Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with Loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simu, and on today's uh, brief edition, we'll be talking about the new campaign that was set up and released, publicised today, We Care do you uh, a protest from the Arsenal fans against the ownership and uh, these guys they want answers and as do I as do all of us so it's a really um, you know positive thing really interesting uh, get behind it I'll be putting the details in the description of how you can uh, follow I'll be talking to Mark uh, from the campaign and I'll be talking to Chris Davison uh, for some transfer updates also so uh, stay tuned uh, if you haven't already, hit the like, hit the subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. Thanks to all of you who have uh, subscribed recently. We've hit the 2,000 mark on YouTube, which is uh, great. Um, and yeah, hope you guys enjoy the show. Joining me on the line is Mark King. Now, Mark, there's been uh, some incredible traction created today regarding the uh, we Care the You campaign, a campaign uh, protesting uh, against the ownership, but I would say in a very... Um, articulate way a very sensible way and a way in which you know lots of fans are able to get on board with it how has this come about and and how has this just exploded today um well it was about a, a month ago i'd say and um one of the main people is gav from she war who really tried to pull all the various fan groups large blogs influential sort of twitter accounts together to say look you know we really need to try and work together if we're going to get anything done about Cronky. You know, I mean, it was a bad end to the season. The Europa League final was, you know, an awful capitulation. The way the fans were treated, not only by UEFA with the final in Baku, but, you know, little support or interest from the club to help fans get there. I think it just really made pretty much a perfect storm. And then, you know, the lack of transfer news the lack of and that's in or out you know I mean we've got plenty of players that we should be shifting out but we we don't seem to be doing it I think that just made everyone realize that yeah look you know regardless of whether the club makes a couple of signings we're in a bad situation absolutely and uh and and something needs to be done so we all kind of we, we all met it was all kept very hush hush and nothing's really been spoken about it uh until today which was the agreed sort of release date of uh, to, to actually start the campaign of We Care Do You. Yep. No, it's fantastic. And, and I'm behind it. And as you know, I've given my full support to it because it is something I really believe in. I think that the way in which the statement has been put out and it's very well articulated and what I liked about it and what probably drew me towards it is it's not as simple as just standing there saying, spend some money. Do you see what I mean? It's, there's a lot more substance to this. This has been a gradual decline uh, for a number of reasons. And, and it's really nice to read a statement that addresses all of those points rather than it's just, you know, somebody standing there shouting about money. And, and that's what I really liked about it. What's the what's the sort of plans going forward? And, and you know, there has been some uh, interest shown by some really, you know, high profile journalists and stuff. And a lot of the major media outlets are covering it today, which is fantastic. Where does we care? Do you go from now? Well, I guess really this is us uh, taking first serve at the club and the ball is really in their court now. If you're going to start any kind of campaign, you have to outline what you think the issue is is and and what you think the club needs to do about it and they really need to be addressing the points in the statement you know they're quite clear points it's not just about go and buy some players you know we 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 understand that people will say Stan Kroenke has released money to spend on players and we've seen that money spent but generally it's been spent badly in terms of the fees that we've paid for certain players for the, the performances they've delivered and some of the wages that we're laying out as well. We're just not getting uh, performances that merit those wages. So I think, you know, we, we, we believe that there's lots of stuff that needs to be done. And it generally, it comes down to the fact that if the owner doesn't really care about any kind of sporting success from Arsenal Football Club, then he will just carry on doing the bare minimum you know, releasing money from the profits that are made. He has not put a single penny of his own money, of which he has absolutely minted, yep. uh, into the club. And we will just carry on toodling along 
uh, because he thinks that we will stay at a point whereby we'll still make lots of money uh, from the TV deals. And, you know, he's, he's probably looking at some of the, uh, the streaming services entering the, the TV matches uh, bidding. And he's also probably looking at this European Super League as well. Um, so we just we we really need to get him to start acting as ambitiously as some of the other clubs around us who who haven't you know haven't been invested as much in players and maybe don't pay as many wages but they're outperforming us. Yeah, absolutely, and and I think you know it's clear from already that you can see that so many, like you said, different blogs, different podcasts, different channels, etc., have all got behind this and united together, and that's probably the most difficult aspect of this, isn't it? Getting um, all the groups to unite because at the end of the day, uh, some of us have different opinions on different issues, but. We need to put that all to one side, don't we? Because we all love Arsenal Football Club and we all want what's best for the club. And if it means, you know, sort of compromising on certain issues, that's absolutely fine. In, from And I obviously can only speak for myself, but that's how I feel. I feel like I, I disagree with some other Arsenal supporters on various other aspects, but I'm happy to put that to one side for the greater good. And I think that is the key message here, isn't it? It is, you know, if you look at the, the the blogs and the groups that are involved in this at the moment, it's a real widespread. Arsenal has a fantastic range of fans from across all sort of backgrounds and classes, and and you know, and they can each appeal to their own area. There are people that will be drawn towards the AST. There are people that will be drawn towards the Black Scarf, but we want to appeal to everyone because at the end of the day. I would expect that the majority of Arsenal fans will look at the situation at the club and say, you know what, this isn't right. You know, the the money is not being invested. The money is not being invested properly. You know, there's no ambition. There's lack of accountability. We seem to go for a lot of cheaper in-house solutions. And we've been doing this for years and it's catching up with us now. You know, third year running of Europa League football is going to hit the club hard. And, Whereas, you know, we should be looking at how we're going to be getting back into that top four. Uh, I think a lot of us are probably starting to now look behind uh, at the business that likes of Leicester, Wolves are doing and thinking, well, you know what? They haven't got European football to cause them a bit of an issue. They could put in a good season and be knocking on the door of that top six if any of the the, the big six clubs start to fall behind. And And really, you know, that's... If you're looking at any of those clubs who might fall behind, it could be us. So we do, we are looking to appeal to everyone. We're not, we don't want to be overly controversial. We don't want to cause any um, any issues or do anything that's, that people are going to think too strong. But at the end of the day, you know, if we we've put a flag in the sand, a flag in the ground now, and we've said to the club, look, here you go, your turn to respond. If they can't really respond with meaningful actions. I think the next step will have to be that we look at what we can do to encourage the club to uh, take some meaningful actions. Nice and if that part. means that, yeah, and if that means that we're going to have to do some things like happened before, you know, marches, boycotting games, boycotting merchandise, all of that good stuff. If if we have to do that, then it may come to that. But we don't want it. We don't want it to get to that point. We'd much rather the club decided to. Uh, act the way it should be for the yeah. size that Arsenal is. Um, but if they don't, then we will move it on to the next step. There's no doubt about that because if if we need to get dirty to get Mr. Cronky to either change the way he's running this club or to look to hand the reins over to somebody else who does want to invest in a, a club to win trophies, then that's what we will do. Brilliant stuff, Mark. Thank you so much for joining me. Really, really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, thanks for letting me provide some support to this wonderful group as well. And, uh, you know, I hope we can speak again in the very near future with some updates and keep the fans informed. Yeah, I appreciate your support, Harry. You know, just make sure everyone knows which is the uh, the Twitter account to, to watch out for. Any updates and that will be on there uh, from whichever one of the guys is, is running it. And uh, we'll keep everyone in the loop and uh, appreciate the support of you and all your listeners. Brilliant stuff. And we'll be leaving the uh, Twitter handle in the description uh, for those of you listening. So you can uh, click on that directly and get following for all the updates. Uh, Mark, thanks again. And we'll speak again in the very near future, mate.
Joining me on the line now is Chris Davison. Chris, welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, mate. We've just been speaking uh, about the new campaign set up uh, to challenge Arsenal's ownership. We want answers. The fans are sick and tired uh, of the way this club is being run. What are your thoughts uh, on the new campaign, We Care Do You? Yeah, hi, Harry. Thanks for having me back on the show, mate. Um, I think this is certainly um, a welcome uh, uh, move. Um, certainly by myself and by the looks of it, the majority of the Arsenal fan base as well. I see um, uh, We Care Do You is trending on social media. It's reached all the um, main media outlets in the UK and on Sky as well, which is good. Um, look, certainly for me personally as, as a, an Arsenal fan myself, um, something definitely needs to happen now um, with the owner, um, whether he communicates with the fan or um, whether he backs the, the football club with more money. Um, look, something needs to happen, and um, like I can understand the frustration um, amongst the supporters. Um, it has been a little bit difficult um, over the recent few years, with the recent few seasons, with us only playing Europa League football, not getting in the t- into the top four. Numerous amounts of uh, amounts of rumours going around that, that Stan isn't giving uh, or putting any of his money into the football club, um, and. Uh, you know, yeah, definitely really refreshing to see this move happen this morning. I'm, I'm fully behind it. And like I said on social media earlier on today, sometimes these things work, sometimes they don't. But if you don't try, you'll never know. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I'm hoping that um, this this is the start of, um, you know, something good for, for Arsenal Football Club and something good for the uh, us Arsenal fans that deserve to know more and deserve to be treated better. Absolutely. And I think Arsenal have a a great fan base all over the world, a very powerful fan base. And if only everybody can just unite, uh, you know, and get together and put their own sort of opinions aside, because there will be differences of opinion on how you should do this, how you should go about it, what the issues are, etc, etc. But if everybody can club together, um, you know, and put the priorities of the club uh, you know, as the number one, the club is what we all want uh, to prosper. We all want the same things. We all want the best for this uh, fantastic institution. And so, you know, mm. if we can put all that aside and all focus on the same thing, you know, I'm sure we can achieve something. There's no question about that. Now, Chris, let's talk a little bit about transfers. You are the go-to man when it comes uh, to transfer news. Always one of the first Twitter accounts to the big stories. I want to talk to you about Hakim Ziyech because... Uh, there's been a, a quote that's been going around from Mark Overmars where he says, I'm surprised that things are still so quiet around Ziyech. I think he's better than Mesut Ozil. I would say sell Ozil and for half his feet, you can get Ziyech. But they didn't listen to me, so it's possible he stays with Ajax. Is Mark Overmars suggesting that he's had a conversation with Arsenal about this? Yeah, quite possibly, Harry. I think, um, you know, obviously Mark Overmars has close connections to us. He has good contacts at the club and... Um, there is a possibility there that he's, he he got in touch with us. I think obviously Ziyech has, has, has said before that um, he's open to moving to a um, a bigger a bigger club um, to continue his career, um, to continue developing, and he's certainly got the the ability to do that. He's a very talented player, um, uh, me included amongst the uh, I think probably the majority of the Arsenal fan base would actually like to see him start over Mesut Özil. Would rather have Ziyech in this in the squad. But um, for me personally, the way I've been seeing it, the way obviously things have been said recently, um, it looks like Mesut isn't really going anywhere this summer. Um, and, um, you know, he wants to continue his career at Arsenal. He's happy here. So we might just have to take this one on the chin this time, I'm afraid, and um, uh, respect Mesut's opinion. And I think, you know, we, we know somewhere in there we've got a fantastic quality player, but he needs to up his game a little bit next season, especially after a disappointment. Um, campaign last time around. So Mezit's got to just turn things up now and hopefully he can be a very important player for us next season. Yep, agreed. Now we've also heard that Arsenal have, of course, had another bid rejected for Kieran Tierney. It feels like we're penny pinching now. It feels like we're, uh, you know, taking the piss a little bit and, and, you know, Celtic understandably want more of the money up front. Can you yeah. see this one uh, coming to some sort of conclusion soon? Because we've been hearing about it for weeks. We've been hearing about Saliba for weeks. We've even heard links to Zaha for weeks. But nothing has materialised as of yet. Are you hopeful that Arsenal will get anything over the line in the coming days? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful, Harry. Um, you know me. I'm, I'm a, I tend to be a, quite a positive guy, a positive fan, and I'm always hopeful until the very end. And, you know, I think, obviously, like you said, these these um, uh, few transfer sagas have been going on for a while now. Um, Kieran Tierney, um, latest bid was rejected, but we're, we're said to be preparing a, a third offer, um, which is meant to be going in very soon. Um, and it said that it, it's going to be more sort of money up front for Celtic rather than uh, lots of staggered payments. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we could see a positive outcome with that. Um, I think it'd be a very, very good sign for us. We're concerned Saliba, of course, another one that's been going on for a, a month or two now. Um, it seems that things were complicated a little bit by Tottenham's late interest in him as their late offer. Um, but apparently out, coming out of France now, reports are suggesting we've matched Tottenham's offer and that it will be down to St Etienne and also the player himself, who is said to be keen on moving to Arsenal. He's already agreed personal terms with us. So we've got that that factor on our side a little bit. Um, again, it's going to be probably um, a matter of days until we, we hear another update on that. And then, of course, you have the winger situation. Zaha, um, uh, is, you know, this has been dragging on for a while now. Obviously, he's finished the Africa Cup of Nations. Whether we'll see anything happen qu- more quickly now concerning his future remains to be seen. Also, re- interesting in, in a Brazilian winger, Everton. Um, seems like a really talented player. There's reports coming, apparently respected journalists reporting that um, Arsenal's medical team are meant to be uh, doing some tests on him out in, in his native country. So w- whether that's true or not remains to be seen. I mean, I think well, I might have to take that one with a pinch of salt to begin with. But yep, if these links don't go away, you know, I think there could be something in there, especially with um, Edu now at the club, um, who knows the player really well. So it's going to be an interesting, um, possibly long last uh, couple of weeks of the window. But fingers crossed we can get a few over the line and, you know, go into the next season much stronger. Absolutely. Great stuff. Chris, thank you so much for joining me uh, for that quick uh, update. And uh, we'll talk to you again very soon in the near future. Thank you very much for having me on, Harry. Cheers. That brings us to the end of another edition of the Chronicles AFC Daily. We'll be back tomorrow with more unless any transfer news breaks. And then we'll be jumping straight on. The fans phone in is back this week, Thursday night at 9 p.m. Uh, so if you want to register your interest in taking part on that, all you have to do is DM us on Twitter at Chronicles underscore AFC. Like I said, we'll be back, if not later, then certainly tomorrow. Take care.